So sometimes we get like low flying planes and stuff, it gets, it gets kind of scary. I don't know what that was though. It sounded like it was up in the sky, but I don't, I don't know what that was. Anyway, I hope I don't see that on the news later. Hi everybody. Welcome to the show. Um, episode 44 September finished projects. So we're, once we go over, um, whips and everything, we're going to go through everything we got finished this month. Um, we're actually shooting, uh, I'm filming on the 29th. So I technically have one more day of the month, uh, which nothing is going to get done by then. So this is, this is all we finished for the month is done right now. So, okay. Um, I have more news on Lola. <laughs> so, sorry, I just got out of therapy. So I'm like, not sure where I am right now. Cause it's EMDR therapy where you kind of, you have to like relive something. So it's kind of, I'm kind of discombobulated with what time period <laughs> I'm in and where I'm at. <laughs> um, Lola, you know, has low thyroid. But before that, remember the whole reason I took her in was she had the, this, like, she had like pustules in her, um, her underbelly, just like they, they were oozing a little bit of pus and they were red and she was itching. And so I, I brought her in for that originally was what is this infection? And then they were like, well, she shouldn't have this infection. There's gotta be some reason why she has this infection. So <clears throat> remember I had to give her baths every day for two weeks. Um, so she finally off, they gave her one antibiotic and injected antibiotic. And then I went back for a recheck and she still had them. So they put her on an oral, um, antibiotic, which she just finished this past weekend. So she still has like three of them on her. So I called the vet on Monday or Tuesday, Monday. And I was like, yeah, she finished her antibiotics this weekend, but she still has these pustules still. She still has a couple. And I didn't know if they should be fully gone or if I just needed to keep doing the baths because he told me I could do the baths once a week. So we did that. So I was like, I don't, I don't know if this means it's gone. Because they said it could be um, antibiotic resistant like a MRSA. It's Wednesday. They still haven't called me back. So whatever. <laughs> um like I'm going to have to change vets and I desperately do not want to because they are the closest and you know when like your dog needs something and they're like can you drop them off at seven o'clock and I don't know about you guys but I don't want to be awake at seven o'clock so no I don't want to drop them off at seven o'clock but it's literally not even like a mile away down the street <laughs> and like the vet that he takes my big ones to is like I think like five miles away, which is still not bad, but he's not taking my cat or my dog to drop them off at the vet in the morning. He won't do that. If he did that, then I'd probably just go there, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the point is, is I don't want to move vets again. Um, cause I like the one vet It's just everyone else in that place is like ridiculous. Um, so anyway, we're still dealing with these same things. Um, I did go to the doctor, I think I told you, and she ran a bunch of tests and they all came back um, fine. So I don't have rheumatoid arthritis, I don't have scleroderma, she did a, God, my thyroid's fine, she was, she's trying to get to why I am so exhausted all the time. And I don't know. So there's a health update for you that you don't care about. Anyway. something really weird happens because I don't know if I have a bunch of new subscribers or not because I kept getting on Sunday, I kept getting all these, um, alerts that this person has subscribed to you and this person has subscribed to you because if you have a, if you have a public, uh, YouTube profile, I have a morning do studio as a public profile, but I have a personal one that is private. So 
Like when my personal one subscribed to my public one, I didn't get an email saying this person has subscribed to you. Um, so I got like five alerts that I five new subscribers, which is weird because I have like 39 subscribers, right? So like I have more shows than I have subscribers. So I was like, this is weird. Why do I, it would just all in the morning, just boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, why do I have five new subscribers? This is pretty weird. And then I went and looked and they showed five more. And then later on the day, it showed a sixth one, which I didn't get an alert for. So that had to be someone with a private uh, profile. So I was like, where did these six come from? Like six is, I'm like, and one of my friends was like, well, maybe someone shared one of your videos. And you know, I was like, that could be, cause I wouldn't have any way of knowing that. Um, cause I was looking around, like who put out a video today that would have mentioned me and it was nobody I knew. So, um, I didn't, I didn't know if I'm um, like, but if somebody mentioned me, I, I think I would get more than six, but you know, I, I was like trying to figure out why, where the, all this new traffic was coming from. So then this morning, so Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I have 45 subscribers from 39, right? I get up this morning, it's back down to 39. And I'm like, what? what? Like, the analytics don't help you at all. Like, it tells you absolutely nothing. And half the time, it just confuses you further. So I'm like, I'm not even looking at it anymore. <clears throat> But I thought it was funny. I was like, oh, we're going to have to do a giveaway if we if we get up to like 50 or 100, you know, we're going to have to do a giveaway because that's what people do. And but now I'm back down at 39. I don't even have to worry about it because it's like nothing happened. Right. The joys of having a YouTube channel. I'm telling you, it's ridiculous. Anyway, let's get to it. Eight minutes. I just wasted eight minutes over nothing. Um. I am wearing, this is my um, Cascade 220 in black. This is, I, ju I got this from Dress Lily, who I do not recommend. This is like wish for clothes. It's terrible and they don't fit right. But I got this because I actually wanted to recreate this as a real sweater because I liked the look of it. It's a, like a sweater dress, but I love this shawl collar and then I love how it came to this deep V. I don't really care about this, this stuff, is, but it's got like this cabling and I thought it was real cute. I thought, oh, that would be like a cute, you know, um, it's almost like a cardigan, but then it's connected and I liked the thought of that. Um, but the sizing is so weird. Like it's almost a dress, but then look at how much room is here. Like I could fit a pregnant belly in here. Like it's just bizarre. It's just bizarre. So I would be real careful if you order from them. I will not be ordering from them again. I bought two things and the other thing is a shirt and it looked like a sweater. So I'm like, nope, nope, nope. Um, but it's cold in here today. And I was like, let's see how comfortable this is. Cause I want to see where I want to put things. Cause well, for one thing, they didn't really take in enough for, it's just done bizarrely. It, ju it just isn't done right. But I wanted to have like a schematic so I could um, design something like this. Cause I really, really like it. Unless you know of something that looks like this, please drop it in the comments so I don't have to work on designing something. Um, oh, my bat earrings. Do you see these? I think they're like acrylic or something. I got these from Poland, um, from an Etsy store from Poland. It took literally a week, like I think a week and a day, and she like shipped them the next day. Um, black magic jewelry. You guys, I looked at her Instagram was it this morning and she's like, God, bats, skulls, pumpkins, and something else I saw. And I'm like, Oh my God, I'm gonna have to buy more of them. I think they were, they were under 10 euros. So I think that's like 11 us dollars. Um, 
I love these because they're huge and they're exactly what I wanted. I wanted some huge bat earrings on a hoop and I just am so in love with them. I just love them. They're huge, right? Oh, I love it. Okay, anyway. I posted them on my Instagram too, so I'm going to go nuts in her shop for Halloween because I love it. Um, anyway, what's finished for today? Sport Eleanor. Sport Eleanor is finished. Um, do you want her dimensions? Who is tap dancing? Go lay down. Low. Go. Go lay down. Go lay down. Go, girl. Everyone else is good girl, Rippy. You're doing good. <clears throat> um, Sport Eleanor is done. Now remember, we redid her with the new increases on the smaller needle. So we went down to a four, which is uh, the fabric I like. And you know what I think it is? Uh, it doesn't, because it's th it's still thin yarn. It's not as, it's just a smidge thicker than fingering. So it doesn't have to be, uh, we don't need as much, you know, room between stitches to get a nice drape. However, this is the dyer supplier base that I did not like that much. Um, I am going to order a couple bags of well to die for is I think it's Sheila's gold something gold I'm pretty sure it's gold it's an 80 20 um, merino and um, which I'm pretty sure this is too but this is not nearly as soft as that stuff I got that I think is where this came from because the yardage fits <coughs> and the fiber content fits. Um, I feel like you're slanted. Or am I slanted? Is my camera slanted? Oh, I hope you guys don't have vertigo like I do because this looks really bad. Is it bad? Let's see if I can bring her closer, have her take up more room, then you don't have to look at it. Is that better maybe? Okay, I'll try to stay as still as possible, okay. Um, <clears throat> oh, you want the measurements. Um, just like the last one, the um, worsted weight we did, it was bigger than the original, but smaller than the new one because the newer one was on 4.5s. So again, if you like, the uh, holier fabric, then go up a size. Pick a fabric look. If you like the holier stuff, go up a size. And if you want a bigger shawl, go up a size. If you like a denser, it's not really dense. I don't want to say it's denser because it's really not dense. It has great drape. It's, I think it's warmer this way. I think that's why I'm gravitating towards this one as opposed to the other one is, of course, also take into consideration that I block like a mad woman. I block very aggressively. All my pieces are blocked very aggressively. That's how I, I block shawls aggressively. I don't block anything else aggressively, just shawls. Um, I just do it. <laughs> it's part of the fun of it for me. Um, so at a, on a four or five with the new uh, increases, uh, that shawl was 58 by 23, okay? So this shawl is the same as the new worsted, 52 by 20, but it doesn't fit the same as the worsted because it's a thinner fabric. So it actually fits better even though it's small, which I've already told you that happens. So the original sport was 48 by 17. So 48 to 52. That's f four inches. It's only four inches. We got four inches. Okay. So it's two on each side. And then we went from 17 to 20, which is fine. Um, so yeah. 
Sport Eleanor. Right. Okay. So the only one we have left is fingering Eleanor, which brings me to whips. I'll show you fingering Eleanor first because we have a new whip that was not planned. Um, this is the Halloween colorway that I dyed up not on a dye project, just on some random day I was like, hey, I'm trying to figure out which side is going to be the right side because the bind off's going to be here. Okay, so this is, I'm trying to figure out how to let you look at this. Um, I love this black, black dot. Um, I love right in here we've got the pink and the purples together. That looks pretty. Makes these when they're together the pink almost looks pastel because of how bright the green is. It's really strange. And of course I like the black and the purple. Right? Black and the purple. All of this part, the black and the purple. Oh, that looks better if I put my hand behind it, huh? So you can see it. Um, it's weird because the purple isn't a uh, pastel, but when it's next to the green, it looks pastel. It's really bizarre. Like a trick of the eye, I guess. I think that's the bluer part of the purple. Remember, pur my purples always break. I always get a red purple and a blue purple all in the same thing, so I gotta get better with I mean, that's not actually anything I'm doing. It's the colors when I dye purples. Because purple I should be telling you this during dye projects. Uh, purple is two colors, okay? Purple is cyan, which is blue, and magenta, which is pink, okay? So this purple specifically is 25.75, right? So is it 25? It's 25. Oh my God, I didn't write any of my notes for my last one. Oh no, because it wasn't a dye project. It, I mean, the, the, the one was a dye project, but I'm pretty sure it's 25% magenta. No, 75% magenta and 25% cyan. I'm pretty sure that's, I know it's 25-75, I'm pretty sure it's more pink than blue. So what happens is I mix up whatever color is the smallest, usually. I do that one first. So I would do uh, 0.25 grams of, of cyan, and I'd put it in my pan and I would take my milk frother and buzz it around right and then I would measure out my 0.75 grams of pink magenta put that in there and again put my milk frother in it and you would see the the water would turn purple because they're mixed okay and I'm pretty sure my Water was heated at that point. Yeah, because we had already done the green. We did the green first, right? So my water already had acid in it and was already warm. <laughs> Which, if I wanted a purple that was going to stay purple, that one did it. That one just got pink on it, so that one doesn't. That's not going to show us anything. Um, so. If I wanted a really one color, what I start with is no heat. And I put the yarn in, soak it first, and then I take the soaked yarn out and I'll put the dye in. Both dyes. Whatever color you're making, make a purple. So I put both dyes in, put the yarn back in, and then I would let it come up to temperature before I would put any acid in it. So this was actually like totally the opposite of how we would do it, which is why we got this tonal. So I want to explain to you what happens is that the the pink 
And you can see this as it's happening, okay? You can see the pink strike immediately. You could see the water go blue. And you're like, why is the water going blue? The water should just clear, right? No, because all the pink um, does it first. I don't know what to call that. Um, it's not absorbing. It's a chemical process. I don't know what the name of that chemical process dye dyeing I don't know what you call it when it attaches when it affixes to the yarn it's like if you're dyeing your hair what do you call that process of when the dye attaches because that's also you know like it's the same protein I just don't think it's acid I've never had my hair smell like vinegar now I'm like hey could I dye my Yes, it does. <laughs> anyway, so the pink attaches first, and because the acid was already there, the pink went to wherever it touched first. So I think what I did was I can't remember if. I know this happened one time, but I don't think it was this. I think it was one of my other ones that when I got done, because it had done this, there were spots that were blue that were too blue for me. And so I wanted to add in more pink. And when I did that, the pink immediately struck on the outside where it hit first. So then the inside didn't get any. So the inside was still blue. I think that was... What else do we have purple in? Was it the other Eleanor? Was it the other Eleanor? The DK Eleanor, maybe? Because I don't, I don't think I added, did I add more to this one? Maybe it was this, I don't remember. Because the water was clear and I just put some more pink in. Very small amount. Because I wanted to bring up the blue to be more pink. But, I mean, to be more purple. And it worked in some parts, like you can see right here. It's a real nice royal purple. And then here it's like I'm trying to see where you could get them together. See, okay, see right here. Pink. There's pinky purple and then there's blue purple. So it all dep so it didn't get the point is it didn't go evenly, which is what it should have done and it didn't. And that's because I think because there was acid already in it. So it struck quick wherever it found fiber it just struck, which is fine. It's not a big deal. I mean, that's how you get tonals. It's kind of part of the process. And if you're if you're using high acid, that's you're going to get a, a variation in color like that, which is fine. I'm certainly not mad about it. It, it can give um, depth to your color. It can give you a little dimension to your piece so it doesn't look like one flat color. You can see in here there are colors. You can see in here there are different colors. That's because I added different colors <laughs> in there. But it makes it so it's not like a f just a flat piece of, you know, it gives us some more <clears throat> like movement, some direction, some interest than just being flat whatever color it is okay that's Eleanor I'm not even halfway done so I don't know when she's gonna be done I'm assuming before uh, shellography starts on the 8th um, I have another whip that we did not talk about except for my sweater weather episode because it was in there so this is um, blanket cardigan by Heart Hook Home. Take a good look at that picture because it's the only one that is in the pattern. Um, this pattern was a uh, five dollars, and I have some problems with it. <laughs> and because I am a knitter and a crocheter, I realize that there are different standards in each craft. And I'm surprised that this was not a free pattern. I'm surprised this pattern cost $5. And I'm going to tell you why. <sighs> uh, 
first of all, there's no schematic. Usually there's a schematic. For a garment, you get a schematic that says your sleeves from here to here is this, you know, length. Your armhole is this size, right? I am used to seeing schematics that tell me what the pieces are and how big they are, right? Also, I'm used to, instead of small, medium, large, you get a bus size, and then it'll say, um, this pattern incorporates two inches of positive ease, so, you know, whatever. <clears throat> that did not say this. That said, the small size, which is the size I'm doing, was zero to two, and then it gave the measurement of 48.5. I don't know what the 48, I mean, I know now what the 48.5 is, but I, in relation to a small, uh, which I expect to be 30 to 32, I don't know what to do with the 48.5 is what I'm saying. I don't know what to do with that number. I don't know what to do with that number. It has nothing to do with any size on me or what, how much, ease I should be looking for or anything like that. So that was very confusing. Um, also, there's one picture. That picture I showed you is the only picture of the thing. So I have no back view. I have no side view. I have no idea. So it's constructed from the bottom up and then you work three separate columns. So you have slits for, sl for the sleeves. I have no idea how big that sleeve hole is going to be, so I'm probably going to have to add rows. I'm not sure because I, I have no measurements to go off of. So that's kind of my big gripe is when you're putting in the time and the work to make a garment. I don't know about you guys, but I have to make a lot of adjustments so it fits my body. And if I don't have... A schematic at least where at least in the schematic I know I have certain measurements that I can go from and go okay I'm gonna need to take it in here I'm gonna need to let it out there you know you get an idea of the shape of the garment there's no schematic at all there's absolutely it's written row by row and so by taking her gauge and the stitch counts I was able to make a rough estimate of, of, you know, to get to the 48.5 and I get what that is, but I'm pretty sure it wraps around you and goes to the shoulder. It wraps around under one shoulder and then wraps around to the other shoulder, but still that's not giving me, I'm just saying a schematic would have helped as would some sort of fit. Like, does this have any positive ease? Because if this is like, oh, it's going to fit with five inches of positive ease, then I would have like knocked 10 stitches off of my foundation row. And because it's just like a blank, it's, there's no shape to this at all. It is literally a rectangle. I'm holding it upside down. It's literally a rectangle. <clears throat> but I did want to talk about this yarn because I dyed this yarn. So I wanted to show you what it looks like. So my point is I have no way of knowing if this is going to fit me until I'm almost done. So when we, I've just split for the sleeve slits. So I have to do the like side pant, the front, front, back and other front. Do three panels. So those two holes will, those two slits will be your armholes, right? Anyway, it's already super heavy, so I'm not even sure that I'm going to wear it. Um, oh, I did it backwards again. So I was a little uh, disappointed with the pattern, to be honest. Quite uh, disappointed with the pattern. Because I hate putting all this work in because... If you are someone that is not of like a usual size, is that a good way to put it? 
Um, like I am, I've told you guys this before. I am constantly altering patterns because they don't have stuff to fit me. So I'm going to show you this yarn because I'm doing two different yarns. One is completely black. One is completely black. This is over dyed um, Patton's worse classic worsted. I got it, Joanne's actually I got it from a D stash. And that was like a purple color, so I just overdyed it black. And this was emerald, and I thought, oh my god, you know me and greens, I had to have it. So what I did was I resist I put um ties with nylon cords and other things. So I got like these resists and some of them were tiny and some of them are bigger and some of them are tiny. Um, little, little tinies. Um, so I have four of each and I just start my third ones. So those should get me through the, um, I didn't even try. I did not even try for that. Oh, I wanted to show you the, um, did I not bring it? Did I not bring it? I didn't bring it. I was going to show you it all caked up because it was really, really cool caked up, but it's not in here. <laughs> it's on my kitchen counter for some reason. <clears throat> but I wanted to show you what that looked like all caked up. Looks really, really neat. There are, um, here I'll show you. There's some little ones and then some longer ones, little ones, and then some are just a little blip. And then you get uh, some longer ones, longer ones, longer ones, little blips. Um, so I, w I wasn't, I didn't have a plan for this yarn. I really just wanted to try a uh, resist and I love black and black and green so it's working up almost like almost like a a polka dot but also kind of like animal print like it's still kind of co columns I guess but the way this is worn I think it's gonna be at an angle I'm not quite sure so I'm I'm excited to see how this looks. Oh, I thought it would be uh, perfect for this, and I, because it's non superwash, I thought, um, um, I wanted to crochet because, in my experience, <laughs> crochet is already immovable. So if it felt a little bit, I don't think it's going to make much difference for me. Plus. This is not going to be worn against my skin, so it shouldn't felt. I don't think it will felt because there's not going to be any um, wetness. Like I'm most, uh, you know, worried about armpits felting my sweaters. Um, I'm hoping this won't have like a close armpit. I'm hoping it'll be a little bit bigger because that thing looks big. Um, but again, I, it's on one, one person and I don't know what size she's wearing or what size she is. And the sizing is ridiculous, ridiculous. Um, like basically if you read the Ravelry description thing, you know as much as I do about the sizing, <laughs> which to me is just, excuse me, <laughs> it's like what now? So I'm like 48 and a half like where where do you get there's no part of me is 48 and a half what are you talking about so I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that number at all I don't know how it relates to me at all so if you buy that pattern it be forewarned uh, hopefully I will have a better understanding once it's finished but then it's only gonna be on a size small I'm not gonna know anything about the rest of the sizes um, but yeah, I thought it looked cool. I thought it just, I, I'm hoping it won't be too busy to bother me, you know? So, so I'm, I'm alternating 
every two rows. I'm alternating with black and the reverse, uh, reverse resist die. Reverse speckling is what it's sometimes called. Resist die, resist die, and reverse speckling. Um, yeah, it's resist die because you're resisting. Resisting. It's resist. Resistance. We have a little resistance. Okay, anyway. <coughs> so those are my whips. Um, uh, those obviously are not going to be done tomorrow. So they will be done sometimes, uh, sometimes, sometime. They will be done sometime next month. Um, I think both will be done uh, before the 8th before shellography, which I'm not even going to start till the, that Monday. No, till that Tuesday, because Monday's die projects. Um, yeah, because we're here. So you'll be seeing this on the 1st. So we'll have another whole week to before shellography comes. There's no, I don't think that's going to take, I don't think that cardigan's going to take me another week. Um, because I got three panels and then the sleeves and then whatever the finishing at the neck is. And it's worsted. So I don't see that taking more than a week. Um, or uh, the uh, fingering weight Eleanor. Okay, so <clears throat> speaking of dye project, next week's episode is a dye project, okay? Um, which we will be dying for the shawlography, which I think is going to be, we're doing gray and teal, I think, for that. Oh my God, I'm actually telling you what colors we're dying up front. Um, so, you know that I'm opening the shop this month, or next month. Um, so, I have decided on what bases are going to be in that update. So every day, first Monday's first shellography, then every Monday after that will be a dye day and I'm planning to do two colorways each day. I have an idea on some colorways. I did go through my inspiration folder and picked out some colors. I actually picked out seven or eight colors and I'm only doing six. So some of them are definite. Yes, we're going to do this because I wanted to do this. And then some are like, I don't know if we'll do this. Maybe we'll do one of these instead. But I did go through my inventory and decided what bases. So each colorway is going to be on one base. Okay. So I have picked out six bases. So each, it's not like each color is going to be available on each base. Each base is getting, it's like limited edition. This base is only going to have this colorway, okay? And then this base is going to have this, like, it's not going to be anything like that. It's going to be ready to ship on whatever base I choose. So I'm going to try to pick, um, like, for the yak, I'm going to do something dark. The darkest one will probably go on yak because yak is already has a darker base. It's like a gray base. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm going to go through with you what the bases are. So we have Yak, which is fingering weight, um, 437 yards. Um, I did not write down what these are. I did not write down the fiber content. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Yak socks. I'm pretty sure there's, it's Merino Yak and nylon I'm pretty sure 437 yards then we have platinum sock which is what I've used for all of my all of my all of Hillary's all the fingering weights Eleanor is platinum sock um, and that is a 75 25 462 or three yards depending on what the package you get says because I've seen them packaged both ways um, my new ones are 462. Um, there is a marled. Now the marled is wool to die for. And that's, you actually saw an unboxing here of the marled, marled sock. And it's half superwash merino. And the other is 
uh, fine Peruvian Highland, which I believe is non superwash. So it's got a superwash and a non superwash. One is white, one is black. So I, I, that is the one I want to have the most fun with because we've got a black strand running right through. So whatever colors we put, that black is going to run right through. So I'm trying to come up with something that doesn't already have black on it, but I did have, all of my ideas have black in it. So I'd, I'm probably going to come up with a different one for that. I also have a, enough platinum sock that I could do another colorway in platinum sock. I could also have DK that I could do another, another colorway on, which I might do. I haven't decided yet, but if I have more ideas that I want to do them, then you'll get two extra ones. Uh, we also have non super wash. Oh, I'm sorry. The marled is 425 yards. Oh, and it has nylon in it. There's a non super wash, which I think is 100% merino. I'm pretty sure. That is 436 yards. <clears throat> now, I know non super wash takes a uh, dye slower. Um, And I'm also going to have to dye it at a lower temperature so it doesn't felt. Um, so that also I have to come up with something that's going to work, which means no blue. I'm not putting any blue on there. So that means no blue, no purple because I need high heat and high acid for blue. So no blue, no purple. So maybe black, greens. I don't know. There's also an MCN merino cashmere nylon, high twist. There's 400 yards. And then I have MCN sock, which is 435 yards. Now we did use an MCN sock for Ruth. Ruth was done in MCN sock gorgeous base. I've also used MCN, the high twist, also gorgeous. I made a cowl out of that. It was so soft. Oh my God. And great. I love the high twist. The only thing is you pay with it with less yardage. So I don't know how big of a shawl you'd get out of that, but you'd get a really nice cowl. You get a really nice cowl out of that high twist. Very, very pretty. So those are the six bases that I've got planned for um, the colors. I was thinking tomorrow I might tease you with some of the inspiration photos that I have. A lot of them are actually, this is going to sound terrible, a lot of my inspirational pictures are other people's yarns. Um, but not because I want to copy that yarn because it's not goth enough. I want to take that and goth it out. I want to make it a, a goth version of that yarn. So sometimes it's like, I want to do this, but in a different color and I want to figure out what that technique is. And I like the, the way they put those two colors together, but I want to use, you know, goth colors. So I'm not going to put pictures of anyone else's yarn because I don't want anyone to think I'm trying to copy their colorways because I'm not, <laughs> I would just buy it. Um, true story. Um, cause it's like impossible to, it, it could literally be anything. That is why I give you guys my colors. That's why I do. Cause you're never going to figure it out. You're never going to, even as simple as mine are, you won't be able to figure it out. Okay. So that's an update for that. So do we want to look at what we've finished um, this month? Because it's a lot. So we finished <coughs> two Mayas, which have both been sold already, but I need to hang on to them until uh, the Maya, um, Maya release. I did this one in Jasmine. I'll have to ask her what she wants them to smell like. Um, so yeah, we dyed this, remember? This is one of our dyes. So we finished Maya. Fingering weight Maya and worsted weight Maya. I, I think I'm gonna reblock both of those. 
We also did two worst in the weight Eleanors. <laughs> we did two of these. Um, and we did DK Eleanor and Sport Eleanor. And let's not forget Malayla. That is seven shawls we finished this month. Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven shawls, y'all. This one was partially done. I only had to do the 30, last 30 grams of it, um, which is probably, probably why we were able to get so many done. Um, but yeah, seven shawls, that's kind of a big deal, right? <clears throat> I know we had other things planned that we, <laughs> when my, we had other things planned, but then I had that great idea to change the increases of the base pattern for all of them <laughs> in the middle of the month, right? I'm such an idiot. So we had, yeah, we had all the Mayas. We did all the Mayas. No, we didn't. We didn't do sport weight or DK. We decided we weren't going to do those. Okay. Yeah, we had a sweater, the capelet, crop tops, and shorts. Not, none of that got touched because I was busy redoing Eleanor's. Um, so we did get done the worsted Eleanor, DK Eleanor, Sport Eleanor. So now just fingering Eleanor is left. And we can finish that next month. That's not a big deal. I think we'll have it done by the 8th. And then Maya's being released on the 15th, which is when I need those uh, measurements for her. So actually, I could start writing Maya. I'm going to start writing Maya this weekend. <clears throat> Let's get her written up. So then all I, the only one I'll need is the end of the fingering. And then I can pop that in there. Because um, I think I'm going to be pretty busy with all these dye days and shawlography. And I'm really just going to focus on shawlography and the dye days. And whatever happens, happens. And I'm not going to really worry about it too much. So, seven shawls. Oh, my God. I'm so glad I only have one left. <laughs> Because I like, I don't want to, like, I'm not, I, I know I said I, I might work on Malayla and put her out later this, I'm not doing that. No, I'm taking a break, for real. And no, I'm not looking at Malayla until sometime next year. I'm just not going to do it. I'm just, I, I, I cannot, I cannot. Maybe January. January, I might be back in the mood, but I'm going to take... October, November, December. Uh, well, maybe. See, here's the thing. Um, have you already noticed? I noticed like a week before the equinox, the sun was different. And I swear to God, I'm like a flower. I am so concerned with where the sun is in the sky. <laughs> How the light hits does something to me. I don't know what it is. I don't have the seasonal affective disorder. I've had, I've tried the light. It does not work. Um, so I don't know exactly what my problem is. I have a giant fear of the dark because um, I fear going blind. I've feared going blind since I got glasses in second grade. Because I literally thought I was going to go blind. Because the doctor was like kind of shocked at how bad my eyes were at in second grade. How old are you in second grade? I don't remember. So I, I'm so hyper aware that just some, this uh, eye doctor making a comment that my eyes were pretty bad. I think he said something like, oh, you must n not be able to see a lot of things. Like he was, he, I think he was trying to make me feel better, but then I got like scared, like, oh my God, I'm abnormal. Things not to say to an already neurotic child, okay? So, <laughs> since then, I've had this fear that I'm going to go completely blind. And I don't mean blind where, like, you can still see light and stuff. 
but complete darkness and blindness. And then I go, we go and do that 23 and me crap. I get an email at like, Christina, you have more health reports available. And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> and they're like, out of the two variants, we test, we test, we check for uh, macular degeneration. I don't know if it's an early onset macular, some sort of macular degeneration. Of the two variants we screen for, you have both variants. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, could you not have like prefaced that? Like, in a, like, sit down, just sit down, calm yourself. It's no big deal. <clears throat> because I know that doesn't mean I'm going to get it. It just means that, you know, perfect storm, it could happen, right? biggest fear <laughs> I meant to edit all that out you're never gonna know I said that um anyway so I'm like I'm walking out at the bathroom and I'm like my husband's sitting there he's off work for the week so he's watching tv and I'm like I don't feel like I look like myself and he's like <laughs> you look like a kid's art teacher. And I'm like, I don't even know what that means. But I hope it means something good. It, he's laughing at me. So I'm like, that doesn't sound like that's something good. So all I can think of is Miss Libby, right from uh, Adam Sandler, Billy Madison, right? Miss Libby's car is green. No milk will ever be our milk. Right? Anyway, <laughs> what? I don't know. I'm assuming I'm the type of person that would, if I find a, a sweater pattern I like, I'm just going to keep using it and maybe like put in a different motif at the bottom or, so, you know, like I'm going to know the stitch counts. So I could put in some sort of motif. I don't think it, because I'm doing v-necks or scoop necks I wouldn't have anything here I'd have it down along the bottom right but I also like the idea of having a different colored ribbing and cuffs and hem like incorporating that into the bottom I don't know these are just ideas I'm speaking out loud about what I want to do because remember I've talked to you about I don't know what I want my wardrobe to be and I'm trying to think of it long term term of how to be goth without being Halloweeny and without being not childish but you know what I mean not childish but something else you know what I mean and so I see all these beautiful colorwork sweaters, but they're not things I would do, especially the round yokes because I don't want the round things. So I'm thinking, what if I can incorporate whatever I learned from the scoop neck, the, the riverside that has the scoop neck? What if I can, whatever I learned and doing that, and what I learned from doing the witchling, which like if we could combine those two sweaters together, it would be like perfect. So. One's on fingering, one's on sport. You know, I love that new sport base, right? So if I found that sport weight base, then I just have to change the, which I can do because there's no color work up there. And I guess I wasn't aware that you could just do color work on the bottom, which for me makes more sense because I, my, I wear a lot of black, okay? So I wear black pants and a black top. So if I had that bit of color to break up right there rather than up here, I think it would look a whole lot better. So anyway, that's where my style thing is going. And then if I know how many, you know, well, I do because I have the pattern, the witchling, how many... I could make up my own charts and put other things there or I could use like the death flake that's got the skulls in it I could put that in there I could do death flake I mean there's a bunch of stuff there's a bunch of 
you know, you could really take any like cross stitch pattern and put it in there. Um, but I, I want something that's not so childish and not like so blatantly Halloween. But see, I really just would like to do like the nice looking color work just in dark moody colors instead of like either nice feminine colors or like what do you call it when they're really like naturals like natural tones what's when you're what what do you call it when there's um there's not a lot of contrast between them like sub subdued tones like I want to do gothy moody colors and still have that type of look like you know where it's just a pattern it's not anything you know in there you know what I mean That's what I mean by it not being childish and not being um, too Halloween-y. I could do those just with darker moody colors. Why not? I think that's what I want to go for. And um, then I can leave my craziness to um, my accessories. God, these are, they're so huge. I love them so much. I just, I think they're like the best. It's exactly what I wanted. I wanted some giant bat earrings for Halloween. Oh my God. They're so great. And they don't hurt either when it's, it, it doesn't like poke or anything. Oh, that does feel kind of sharp, but they haven't poked me at all. Love it. Anyway, um, I'm going to say goodbye because... I need to get back to work, guys. I haven't got so much to do. So much to do. So much planning to do. Um, I can't wait to have these shawls done. I'm going to jump for joy after Maya's release, and I don't have to think about it anymore. So that's why this weekend I'm going to write her down, except for uh, the fingering weight, which I have to wait for Eleanor. Um, but I'm going to have her written this week weekend, and then... We'll put her out on the 15th. All the pictures are done. Both of them are sold. I'm going to hang on to them, though, until um, I'm going to send them off after our Maya release taping. Actually, I might wait till I put it up so I make sure I don't have to retape or anything. Don't forget, it's Eye Project next week where I will reveal the final shawlography. I will show you how to dye those colors if you like them we're doing gray and a teal I'm gonna try to get solid colors so it's really nothing fancy so you probably won't but anyway I hope to see you back next week for dye project um, so anyway take care of yourselves I'll see you next week bye